Hello, my name is Sherry Hubert. I'm the Associate Dean of Admissions here at Duke University's Fuqua School of Business, and welcome to the Blue Table Talks. This is our second season, and we're so excited to have everyone back, and those of you who are new to Blue Table Talks, join us for season two. Um, for those of you who are new, Blue Table Talks really allows kind of a bird's eye view of the community that we have here at Fuqua, getting to know our students and their experiences and how they found belonging based on their various identities. And so we're really, really excited about season two. And to kick it off, today's discussion will be focusing on from battlefield to boardroom, how our veteran students find are able to thrive and find belonging at Fuqua. And we have a wonderful um, set of guests here. Uh, we have, and they're gonna introduce themselves, but we have um, students representing our daytime MBA program, our executive MBA program, and then our Masters of Quantitative Management and Business Analytics program. And with that, I will ask each um, of my guests to just briefly introduce themselves, you know, um, perhaps, um, you know, who you are, uh, what branch of service you are in, and um, a little bit about what you did before you decided to start your business school um, experience, and then we'll get more into questions after that. Okay. You want to go? Go ahead. <laughs> I guess it's starting with me. So, <laughs> my name is Bruntavius Rayleigh. I am a second year MBA student in the daytime program. I was part of the Air Force before this. Uh, no, I didn't fly planes. <laughs> Actually, I did for a little bit, but I washed out. Story for another day. But in the meantime, I was a contracting officer, and I ended up teaching English at the Air Force Academy Preparatory School <clears throat> towards the back end of my career. Great. That's very cool. Um, so I'm Chris Morris, and I was in the Navy for 10 years. I uh, just got out a couple years ago. Um, I'm currently a project manager. I build healthcare facilities. Mm -hmm. um, so still stuck with the construction. I'm in a civil engineer background, so stuck with that. Um, and this is my first year in the executive MBA program. Wonderful. Hi, my name is Brendan Despain, and I'm in the MQM program for business analytics. And before uh, coming here, oh, I served in the Army. I almost forgot to mention that. <laughs> I didn't fly planes or try to fly planes like Brontavious, but I did jump out of some planes, so that was fun. <laughs> um, and before coming into the program, I worked in the GRC industry and the tech industry. So uh, risk technology, and uh, I sold that for a little bit. And I wanted to get into the analytic, analytic space, and so I joined the program here. Okay, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, I always say, you know, our military students have served their country well, and I commend them now for investing in themselves through the pursuit of a business degree. But one curiosity that I have, it's a personal curiosity, and I'd be really um, glad if you could just share your perspective. And this is real talk as well. So tell me, how do you feel when people say thank you for your service? Does it land in an authentic, genuine way, or does it sound trite? I'm just curious. I've got, an, I've got an answer for this, so I guess I'll start. Um, so it, I guess it depends on the situation. Yeah. Um, it's all, I always feel awkward on my response to that. It's like, yeah. what do you say back? But I found that usually just saying you're welcome or thank you for your support is okay. usually what I say back, okay. um, whether they support it or not in any way or fashion. But it kind of makes everyone else take a step back and go, oh, yeah, you're right. I do support the military, but what I do here. Okay. Um, so I like to return that with, yes, I serve the country, but yes, thank you for supporting us to do so. Okay, great. So. Yeah, um, I don't feel trite. That's not, I don't think I feel that. Um, I Usually you can tell by the way they say it, mm -hmm. uh, how genuine they are. And um, so generally speaking, if someone does say that, it comes across pretty genuine. And usually I'll just respond in a, like, a you're welcome or thank, or thank you for similar, thank you for your support. Um, and usually I refer them back to the people who are active duty who can really use the support. Mm -hmm. um, because as veterans, of course, like a lot of people, um, being a veteran, you can, it can be tough. Um, but the people who need the most support are, are there right now. Mm -hmm. And I think a, a lot of the times they're forgotten about, but veterans aren't. So. Gotcha. Uh, so for me, every time it's said to me, it usually feels genuine. For the most part, people that don't support the military won't come and say it to you. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> but <clears throat> it does feel kind of awkward because, as you mentioned, you don't always see yourself in that sense. So it's like, I appreciate it, but there are people out there who need it more than me. Even though I've served, it doesn't feel, even though you have served, it doesn't feel like you're deserving. Like, I 
did my part, but there are yeah. people out there who are currently doing that part for the country. Okay. So it's appreciated mm -hmm. when it's shared, but it's not necessarily something that you are expecting to hear from everyone. No. Every yeah. interaction. Okay. Well, and I would say a lot of people don't understand what we did mm -hmm. or in what capacity you served. Mm -hmm. So they have no idea what they're saying thank you for in a lot of respect. Um, because a lot of people, I don't work with a lot of veterans. We have quite a few at our company, but right. my immediate um, team, I'm the only one. Okay. So they don't understand, they don't know what that life was like for me, you know, mm -hmm. what did I do previously? And so I've had people actually ask me, is it appropriate to say thank you? I see. I'm like, yes, actually it is. That mm -hmm. is a very appropriate response, okay. so. Okay, well, I'm glad they asked. Um, and, and that's a great segue into maybe ch ch sharing a little bit about kind of um, briefly like motivations behind this, the brands that you chose and mm -hmm. then um, what, you, what you're doing now Right, and why you've, you've decided either as an active duty, recently active duty military or veteran to now pursue your, your business degree. Mm -hmm. We just give a little context for our audience in terms of your history, right? Because I think that really informs the discussion as well. Who wants to start? Go ahead. You got a mouthful of <laughs> degree that you're <laughs> Can you can you give me the first the first point? Yeah, just the again? motivation around the your service, yeah. why you chose it, and what what branch, and then. What so, so and when I decided on a branch, uh, I went through like an extensive research process to find something that fit me, and um, I actually was motivated to join because my second my second cousin, my mom's best friend at the time, died in 9/11, mm -hmm. and as a young child, I remember watching the plane crash into the towers on mm -hmm. the TV and seeing my mom uh, my mom's reaction, um, and so for a long time I knew I wanted to go and, and serve, and um, I ended up deciding to go this route of special forces with the army. Um, and the motivating factor is really their mission, and their mission is uh, de oppresso libere, which means to free the oppressed. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't make it all the way through, the, I got selected, I didn't make it all the way through the pipeline, I did get injured during the process, but um, it was a really good experience for me, and I, I enjoyed that choice, so, mm -hmm. yeah. And now you're, are you the first one to do the MQM program? Yeah, I am the first. first. Talk, yeah, yeah, talk yeah. about that yeah. because you're so, the opportunity. So, <laughs> yeah, there's so much to say. Uh, <laughs> so, I after leaving the military, I was lucky to uh, find a spot in the in the business world um, in sales at a technology company, mm -hmm. and um, I was having a lot of success in sales. And I wanted to under, I, I basically built out like systems in order to help my, me maximize what I was doing. And that kind of grew to the point where I wanted to scale that across to the rest of like the sales organization and the business. Um, and so I wanted to be able to understand um, exactly how to, how to do that with numbers, uh, how to gain insights from data and information um, and then apply it back to the business. And so. I wanted to get something more technical so I could mm -hmm. manipulate that and build those things myself. And so that led me to the MQM program. Oh, great. And you yeah. um, you were in the service for two years. Yes. And then decided to um, apply for the program, right? Yeah, so okay. I was in the service for two years, then a year year of work year, outside year of, of work. that. Okay. And then okay. program. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. Are, are you hoping this makes like a transition into? I've already made a transition. You've already made it <laughs> <laughs> uh, into a business analyst okay. position. At yeah, because you're in the risks, right? You're yep. in the risk um, track. Yes. Which we'll talk a little bit about later on. Okay. okay. Great. What about you, Chris? Um, so I spoke about this a little bit when I, in my intro to my team and everybody during the first uh, term here at school, about how much representation matters and. I had no intention of serving. My father was a Marine, my grandfather was in World War I, my great-grandfather was World War II, so everybody's, or a lot of people have served in my family, but I'm the only grandchild, actually, on my um, one grandfather's side. And it happened because I was in school. It was during the recession, about 2008, when things weren't going so great for engineers, and I had chosen to be an engineer, um, and didn't really know what I wanted that to do, and I was getting ready to graduate shortly, and met a woman who came in to our civil engineering program, and she had retired from the Navy after 20 years, and had been in the Civil Engineer Corps. And 
seeing her and how enthusiastic she was, she looked like me, she would, you know, just loved her personality, loved everything that she did, and I said, hey, how do I be like you? Mm -hmm. um, and she wrote me a recommendation to get into the program at the time where they were having a hard time getting civil engineers to join about that time um, and was able to get into the program and then it, the rest is history and so that's kind of why I did it um, and that was just the influence of someone that looked like me right and so that is really important to me moving forward that you know not a lot of women go into construction not a lot of women do this and so continuing to have that impact on people is what I've mm -hmm. really pushed for in the rest of my career and coming to Fuqua um, has been interesting because we're our cohort actually has a low percentage of women in it mm -hmm. um, so we've bonded pretty strongly uh, <laughs> at the business school and at this point in my career I've already you know done this for 12 13 years and in middle management kind of wanting to see what comes next and being able to I have the technical background but being able to apply it the business side of things right. to my company and make an impact and, and see where that goes. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we would love to have more women <laughs> to the executive MBA program. Yeah. Um, now, so that was in the Navy, but then you were a Navy SEAL. You were part of the Navy SEAL team. I, I was not a Navy SEAL. No. There has not there has not been an actual woman that has oh. been a Navy SEAL okay. yet. But I supported the SEAL teams. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So That's I was an engineer gotcha. at one of the SEAL teams. That was my last gig. Okay. Before I got out. Okay. Cool. That was a pretty cool one. Yeah. It was fun. <laughs> Ron Tavius. So um, my story is similar to yours in the sense that it wasn't really my plan coming out. Mm -hmm. So in high school, I played football, grades were decent, so the Air Force Academy came to me. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's honestly why I went, but it's one of those things, why you go and why you stay are two different, two, things. <laughs> two different things, right? Because football itself isn't enough to keep you at the academy. <laughs> but. I mean, while you're there, your motivations change, and it's funny because there was a time period where I wanted to do a pararescue. Oh, yeah. So, you know, special forces, because I really want to help people, but I realized, yes, I can swim, but not to the extent <laughs> that, that, that you need to, uh, you need to do, like, to do like pararescue. Yeah. So uh, that's, you know, that's my dreams were crushed, crushed once then. <laughs> but I decided, you know, if I can't do that, I do want to support them, so again, I wanted to fly a10s because mm -hmm. you know they're close to air support something that was close to my heart and that didn't quite work out <laughs> <laughs> but in the end i enjoyed my career and i was able to serve my country in a fashion that i, I like to think was helpful mm -hmm. now how did you get involved with um teaching at the academy oh <laughs> so uh in 2017 i deployed and because of you know the situations around my deployment when i came back they were like hey you can go wherever you want to go, <laughs> which doesn't happen often. And for me, it was it was simple. I wanted to go back to the academy to mm -hmm. teach, just because the energy of the young students there. And also, I came into the academy from a non-military background. I mean, my grandfather, but for the most part, a non-military background. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to help some of those students transition because <laughs> it is a huge transition. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And then uh, what made you decide to kind of take a different course and start to pursue your MBA? This sounds counterintuitive, <laughs> but I enjoyed my assignment so much <laughs> that I realized like there was, you can't teach forever. Mm -hmm. And there was nothing else that would have given me the same joy. So I was like, okay, I, I have to go. Mm -hmm. Go back to school. Yeah. And so why Fuqua? for each of you, like I mean, you could have gone to any school. Why, what was it about Fuqua that attracted mm -hmm. you and, and encouraged, you know, was the kind of mm -hmm. the thing that said, I'm gonna say yes to this opportunity. So, well, for me, my wife graduated from Duke. Um, ah. So that was one factor. <laughs> uh, we already lived in the area. And then um, the second factor is, is I, I didn't realize how competitive Duke's business school was and until I, I was like thinking about going to business school and I was looking up all the programs and um, and this one like fit well and it was very competitive and uh, and then the, just the professionals that teach here mm -hmm. um, are very like they're very knowledgeable and in, uh, in, in the industries and so I, I just wanted to come and learn from them and um, 
that, that's my reason why. So like a little bit of convenience, I already lived in the area and my wife graduated, um, but also just the competitive nature and the amount of knowledge there is here. Mm -hmm. So. Absolutely. Um, very similar, I'm also North Carolina. I've yeah. lived here uh, like three years now. So that that is a plus. Although there are quite a few people because in the executive program you can fly in for the weekend. So there are quite a few people coming from oh, out wow. of town um, for their one weekend a month. Um, but I basically was like, I had my GI Bill to use mm -hmm. and I looked up all the yellow rib ribbon programs, which Duke is the yellow ribbon school. So that's fantastic for veterans. Helps out a little bit. And then said, all right, I want to go to the best school I possibly can if I'm going to go back to school and get an education. Yeah. So what are my options? Kind of narrowed it down to the top 10. And then when I started looking at the programs, what I like about Fuqua is it is a team. It's really based on your team. So in our program, we're all um, put into teams and it's a lot of, you know, working together and figuring things out and, and really trying to meet everyone else. Yeah. It's about the networking. It's about who you're going to go, you know, do business with outside mm -hmm. of this. And that's what I really like about it. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like we'll get to this a little bit more, but you can really apply it mm -hmm. very quickly too. So we'll yes. talk about that. Um, what about you? So for me, <clears throat> I was looking at a few schools, but what tilted me towards Duke were the interactions that I had with students when I was applying. Mm -hmm. And the Team Fuqua concept, I know they're not getting, not getting paid to say that, <laughs> but you realize when I'd reach out over email or call, people would answer. They were extremely responsive, more so than um, a lot of other places, and that's really what galvanized me towards towards Duke. The people were very welcoming. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned Team Fuqua, and I wasn't going to go there, but thank you. <laughs> um, so you talked a little bit about a Team Fuqua moment. Does, does anyone else have a Team Fuqua moment you'd like to share with the audience? I have one for like the first week because. I was like, ah, Team Fuqua. Like, I still was like, okay, you know, I'm not going to drink this Kool-Aid. But <laughs> it's a real thing, and it was amazing to see it happen, too. Um, we came in, and one of my teammates, she's probably going to kill me for saying this, she uh, she had an injury, so she had to go around a little scooter, and we all just kind of, like, backed up and helped her through the first week and were there to support her, and our team just took it on us like we're gonna embrace this it's gonna be like our mascot <laughs> we have this scooter we're bringing around everywhere and everyone just went with it and we got everything we needed done and decided that the team was a priority in making sure that everybody was comfortable yeah so yeah. it's really great to see well, that's great <laughs> um, so I'm gonna talk about identities right I mean we're this the session is focused on your identity mm -hmm. as a veteran but but we all know that we all have different identities, right? So I'm curious, what other identities are, mm. do you hold near and dear to you or that come up um, more often maybe than, than your veteran um, identity um, as a student, right? Anyone can go, we don't have to go in order. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, go ahead. A husband uh, and dog dad, that's like two of mine. Um, I think I'm one of the very few married people in the MQM program. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of younger folks in the program, and uh, so me being married, I think I got a lot of uh, like "you're married" like type of reactions <laughs> when I when I first told them. But yeah, um, that's that's two two big ones for me. Mm -hmm. so. And how does it show up? So you th does it mean you have to make more time for your spouse? Yeah. What does that mean? Yeah. So it means that I have to be like a little bit more communicative and transparent with my team about like my time and my priorities. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, like my dog's my dog needs to go out, spend four hours, you gotta go home. Or like when can we and being a little bit more forward and communicating um, availability and things like that. And, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, I can't just drop everything and go whenever I want. And that's uh, one of the changes that I think is different uh, than other students. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. Also married, mm -hmm. have to spend time with the spouse. That is something you have to it's a huge part of who you are and your identity, for sure, because you're sharing your life with someone. Um, also a dog mom. <laughs> so yes, we talked best. about that a little earlier. Yep, dogs um, are the best. They are. Best companions. I Honestly, my veteran identity is a huge part of me, and yeah. it's something I've had a hard time even shedding, and I don't really want to. I'm very passionate about my service and what I did. I spent a lot, most of my career there so mm -hmm. far. Mm -hmm. um, so that is really a huge part of who I am. Mm -hmm. And how does that show up in, in like as a student, right? Or mm -hmm. how do you know? Um, 
it's it's unique in that when you meet other veterans, you immediately have something to talk about mm -hmm. um, that you may not share with everybody else that you yeah. come. You're like, oh, when did you deploy, or when did you do this, or were you ever stationed here? And you just have these experiences that you don't relate to a lot of other people. Right. Like you talked about being at Fort Bragg. I was like, yep, mm -hmm. I know that place very well. <laughs> I, I heard some. I heard a gentleman speaking about um, like about. The military base near San Diego. I was like, he was in, he did buds. He <laughs> <laughs> I went up and yeah. talked to him, and, he, and sure enough, he'd done buds. Yep. Um, and I was, it was the a water good buds. conversation. You got it. The that's seal pipeline. Like, like, <laughs> sorry, the seal that's, the, that's yeah. the seal, seal oh, okay. pipeline. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. So, <laughs> like you make <laughs> no, these connections. It's, it's, it's yeah. just out of the blue. Like you're, yeah. I was about to go unlock my bike and ride home, and and he's, it's it's a. It's uh, your own like little language mm -hmm. of, mm -hmm. of locations okay. and terms, and you hear someone say something, you're like, yeah. "This is the only way that he would be talking about." Yeah. That. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind so, of a fun piece, and yeah. so you make these connections in mm -hmm. class really quickly, like, "Oh, that guy," you know, okay. "I'm gonna go talk to him because I heard he did this." And yeah. So you've got this little network. We actually had a Slack channel for veterans, like before we even started, okay. where we all communicate with each other and post things, and mm -hmm. it's it's nice. Okay. It's a good community. What about you? <clears throat> so for me, like we all think about our, our identities and our things like we put upon ourselves, but mm -hmm. sometimes I like to think about the identity that other people put on me because it's not the mm -hmm. obvious, like you see how they see you. Mm -hmm. And I have two identities here. One, being fiscally irresponsible when it, com <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to enjoying your business school experience. <laughs> but two, I think one of the identities is somebody that wants to do entrepreneurship but out of school mm -hmm. like a lot of people when they have yep. questions about ETA like they may come to me and it's weird because they ask you questions like so you sure you want to do this coming straight out or like not consulting or why this and you know sometimes I question it but <laughs> it, you know it's, it's yeah. fun. You want to explain to the audience what ETA is? So ETA uh, entrepreneurship through acquisition so mm -hmm. instead of doing the startup model you're pretty much acquiring a company and running it as the CEO and operator. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. So, um, and it's a kind of a newer offering, but we have some really nice resources and, and courses now uh, for ETA, which is great at Pequa, yeah. through our Duke Innovation and Entrepreneurship Center. Oh, okay. Um, so, you know, leadership is also a term that is, you know, um, associated much with, the, you know, military and service, but talk to us a little bit about the type of leadership or what have you learned about your leadership style or the challenges, um, either what's been really easy for you from a leadership perspective or what's been more challenging as you transition from your service to, to school and to kind of uh, a different set of peers that you've had to lead. Mm. I, heard, I saw you smile. Did you have a thought? <laughs> um. So when it comes to leadership, <clears throat> my style, and again, you hate saying things that are cliche, but I like to lead with empathy. Of course, mm -hmm. when you're in the military, you always talk about how the mission is important, the organization is important, but it's my firm belief that the mission doesn't get accomplished without the people, and the organization itself is comprised of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so in terms of that, that's how I like to lead and sometimes I'll be honest leading with empathy can be difficult because it's hard to bring down the hammer mm -hmm. when it needs to be brought down but it's, in terms of transitioning that to uh, business school mm -hmm. it's a little bit easier because there's less responsibility like the type of leadership that they're asking for mm -hmm. within Fuqua is very much different than the type of leadership mm -hmm that you're required to do in other areas, but Explain it's, that. it's like, fine. Give us a, what do you mean by that? Give us an example, break it down. <laughs> what kind of leadership are you asked to have here? Or so, exhibit here? Here, let's say you have your teams uh -huh. that you work on for projects or whatever. Sometimes you aren't forced to be a leader. You're in their team and you storm norm and you figure out where your, your spot is. In the military, depending on your role, you are the leader, so you have to figure that out. But on another level, some of the issues that you deal with are very different. Right now, you have to they have a project that needs to get done. And in the military, you, have, you also have a project that needs to get done, but it's a very different type of project. It's critical. And, critical. Yeah. and also, 
I think the biggest thing is you're responsible for people. I'm not responsible for mm -hmm. my classmates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's more influence management versus top down. Yes. Um, yeah. That's a good way to say yeah. it. Command and control. Yeah, because yeah, mm -hmm. you don't, that was one of the hardest things I think transitioning out is this, yeah. there's no structure. Or the structure is very different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's not a chain of command that's the same and right. you have to do it this way. You have much more influence on the direction you're going on a day-to-day -day basis, whereas normally in the military you're kind of told this is the direction you're going. Right. Um, so I think that's kind of what you're alluding to is you have much more impact on people around you on like a up and down level and across peers than maybe you did when you were in the service. Mm -hmm. um, and I see that very much in what I do as well. Like that resonates to me quite a bit what you said um, in that regard. Mm -hmm. So I had a, I was lucky to get to experience special forces leadership, which is a little bit different than regular army leadership, um, where, for example, in um, selection, you don't wear your, um, you don't wear your patch, you don't wear your, um, your rank on. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter whether you're an officer, or whether you're like a lower ranking um, NCO or anything like that, um, you're, everyone's expected to step up and be leaders in, in, the, in the same or different ways and fill those gaps okay. and work as a team. And the I'd say the like threshold of like communication and leadership there was all, like and the, and also the stress was a lot higher um, and so like I, I have to take that expectation down a little bit mm -hmm. coming into school where everyone's a civilian it's not like it's not like a potential like you're not training for life or death situations right, right. you're training for um, finishing an assignment that's gonna <laughs> that you'll be able to like check that box and uh -huh. learn from and, and move on um, so. I think there's a lot of things that tie together where that leadership is um, kind of across the team. It's uh, everybody needs to step up in, the, in ways and um, sometimes someone has to step up and be a little louder in order for mm -hmm. things to get done. Um, but uh, overall, a bit less of a, a less consequence than, yeah. <laughs> than in the yeah. military. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Risk. Yeah. so let me ask you this then, would you say that your transition from um, kind of pre-business school, where you were in various military experience, had military experiences, to being a student, has that been um, easy transition, challenging emotionally, physically, or, what, or just really easy compared to what you're, you've experienced before? Or has there been challenges, and if so, to you know, what kinds of challenges have you each experienced in your transition to business school? I would say so. my, mine's a little different because I'm in the executive program. I'm mm -hmm. still working full time, yeah, yeah. Um, doing my normal job, right. and then going to school on the weekends. So, and it's hard, you know. In our team, we have an ER doctor. We have so everybody's schedules are just all over the place. Okay. So it might be nine o'clock at night, then we're getting on a call and yeah. having a team meeting to get things done. Yeah. Um, so you learn to manage that. But I would say the military teaches you a lot about stress management. Okay. So. That has been extremely helpful um, to get through school and time management. Okay. And I've noticed that I just, by default, became the person on my team that was like, all right, here's what we're going to do each day. And, and they just kind of let me be that person because mm -hmm. I was good at that. That's what I brought to the team. And everyone brings their different things. And that's there. it was very easy to see. That's what I've been taught. That's how I operate. That's how I think. And so I'm able to keep the team going okay. because that time management skill is, I think, ingrained in us a little better. Um, you know, it's interesting. I was going to ask a question, and I'll go back and let you guys talk about a little bit if, if there are any challenges. But you mentioned stress and coping mm -hmm. mechanisms, and um, because these, uh, what you're experiencing now, the stakes are much lower, right? Mm -hmm. But there's still stress, I would imagine, at times, as you mentioned. And so, what are some of the coping mechanisms, or what have you taught your team about stress management that you feel like is is really valuable to them? Um, we go out to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Food. <laughs> and and it's fun. I We also just, like, we spend the first, like, 10, 15 minutes just, like, getting out what happened mm -hmm. during the day. Or, you okay. know, we have our – we'll reach out to each other quite a bit. We're, we're a pretty strong team, and I've seen that happen mm -hmm. at Fuqua. Like, everybody is a pretty strong team and really is trying to help each other out. So we've said, hey, I'm struggling this week at work. And so somebody else will come and be it. You know what? I'll I'll pick up this slack. I'll run that assignment this week. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's just being very diligent in our communication, like you mentioned earlier, 
Like it's it's like your spouse. <laughs> like you've got to be open and honest about what's going on in your life, mm -hmm. and that helps everybody manage the stress. Like right. there are some weeks you will not be able to do it all. Yeah, and that's okay. Yeah. yeah. What about you guys? Any any coping mechanisms of stress or anything you want to talk about in terms of the transition mm -hmm. and how you've been able to manage it? Yeah. So for you mentioned about how you can help like bring that to your team and. Um, one of the things that I noticed is that a lot of people start focusing so far out. Like mm -hmm. they're like, we have this full term, here's every assignment, every project that we have to do. And they start thinking about all these things like that are really far off. And I had a really good mentor in the military who taught me to look at each, every item that you're doing as like, this is like your 25 meter target. This is your 50 meter mm -hmm. target, putting in the, mm -hmm. uh, you're like at the shooting range. Like, but he puts it in the, into those terms. And it's like, if, if I was talking to him about something that's like at my 200 meter target, he's like, you need to knock down your 25 meter first and then your 50 meter. And so trying to bring that, to put that into civilian terms, I try and bring that to my team as like, hey, like we have all these things to do. Don't worry about this, these things right now. We have one or two things to do this week. Let's knock those down mm -hmm. and then let's work on the next ones. Um, and that removes the stress of just all of that um, the work that's yeah. just can sit in the back of your mind mm -hmm. and um, just focusing on the task at hand. Yeah, so. that's great. I like great. the analogy you used. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it stuck with me. Yeah, so he, <laughs> that was a good, a good one. He was a great leader, so. No, I can't follow yeah. that up. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. We, can, we can move on. Um, Bronte just doesn't get stressed. Yes, that's what he's yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, so you guys have clearly talked a lot about the like your strengths, right? Your strengths and what you bring to the programs mm -hmm. and to your, to your classmates and to your uh, experiences. Um, what resources have you found and leveraged um, that have been helpful to you? As a student, as a student who has, you know, who's a veteran, or as a student who, you know, is any of these other identities that you've shared, what has Fuqua, your classmates, the program, the resources that we offer, um, so that you know those out in the audience understand what to expect should they be a part of our community? What have you leveraged from a resource perspective that you found to be helpful? I mean, so Fuqua has a lot of resources, but I think the one that's helped me the most and it's coming full circle, but Team Fuqua, right? So I'm a veteran, but it's not just the veterans that are helping. I'm a part of BBSA, but it's not just the other black students that are helping. It's the entire team. Like uh -huh. you're going through and you're having a horrible day. So you go to Fox in the lunchroom and you're sitting next to one of your other classmates and you're like, man, I can't find a job. Your classmate is an international student and they're having trouble finding a job too. And if they don't get a job, they have to go back. Mm. So you're sitting there, you're stressing, and you look at each other and you're like, you know what? It's gonna work out, we're gonna be okay. And just having that human interaction and people that can support you, I mean, is invaluable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, that's great. I, I would say same thing too. And, and as I was applying, I asked to be you know, introduced to a student, another veteran, and they actually found a female veteran even that I talked to that was currently in the program, okay. and actually talked to quite a few people, and it was really the current students that helped convince me this was the right place to be. So coming full circle too, I'm an admissions liaison now yes. because <laughs> I want to help the next group because that was hugely, like, that was the resource I used was other students, mm -hmm. just like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I re really use the admissions resources a lot. They, the admissions team was awesome, and they, I, I wasn't, I wasn't super confident. And like the timeline, I kind of waited till that last section to apply, and I was, I didn't know whether I would be able to make it. And they supported me so much, and like any questions I had, they were very responsive. And um, without like their responsiveness, like I probably wouldn't be here this mm -hmm. year. Maybe it would be next year. Um, and then the veterans uh, office has been super helpful because um, I don't know we're all probably using the GI Bill yeah. and other benefits like <laughs> yeah. that, and that's always kind of a pain to work through the, those government funded things. Mm -hmm. But they have been super helpful. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, them and then the classmates I think are very. Um, th they're just it's a team, mm -hmm. uh, like Team Fuqua, like just like you were saying, like you can really lean on them and they tend to lean on you and it's it's a team effort so i'm glad you mentioned that because there are multiple ways to fund your education if you're a veteran and you want to come back to school and that mm -hmm. office has 
they know it. Okay. And the other students and the people, like, please ask for help because yeah. I learned so much going through the process. Oh, good. And everybody I know is, like, there's, like, four or five different ways we're all fighting for education, all yeah. the veterans in my cohort. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. And I was going to say, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, and the, you, you mentioned earlier the Yellow Ribbon program. Uh, yeah. Like, the, I think that's all FEQA wide that's yeah. accepted. Mm -hmm. and, um, there's not, like, a limit. That was a huge... Part it's of a huge shutter. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. Good yeah, to hear. Sure. It's a game changer. Oh, yeah, sure. it really is. Yeah. Well, yeah. this is a good segue because the next part of what I want to talk about is more focused on your admissions experience. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you, know, what, you know, what advice would you give to any veterans looking to apply to business school? Um, and were there helpful resources? I know we yell ribbon, um, the veterans office, but any other resources that you use to help you through that application process or just contemplating uh, the business school experience process? Hmm. Uh, I've got uh, one outside of the admissions in the VA office, yeah. like, I, like I spoke about, um, like that mentor who gave me that same uh, guideline for how to manage my targets. Um, he was the one who wrote my um, my essay recommendation. My rec recommendation letter. Yeah, and so you can lean on like lean on your past if you don't have a network outside of the military. Um, find, like you can lean on your network in the military, and they'll most likely support mm -hmm. you in getting here as well. So, mm -hmm. yeah, the military really values education and higher education, and that's in recent years too. It's been really strongly mm -hmm. encouraged. So I would say, you know, if you're currently in and thinking about getting out and going to business school, that's a great start is to reach out to the people you know that have done that, who have gone back to school. Because mm -hmm. uh, some of them are doing it while they're on active duty yeah. and they're figuring it out. But it's it was pretty amazing to me how many people I know now that have gone to Duke and actually have their EMBA from here. Yeah. Uh, because there is a great network. And as soon as you express interest, somebody's going to be there to help you. Mm -hmm. That's right. So <clears throat> I say one thing that helped me is being in the military when you're doing an application, it's hard to see where your value is because mm -hmm. it doesn't seem special. And the reason it may not seem special is because you're around everybody else mm -hmm. that does the same thing. Right. So what helped me was I had some other people who weren't in the military, which seems kind mm -hmm. of intuitive. I had them look at my resume and they were like, oh, that's cool. That's I've never done anything like that. And it helped me realize that I have done something that's of worth in the civilian world. And it's, you know, it, it looks, frankly, it looks good on the resume. So that helped as well, just getting out of your bubble and thinking that because I was in the military, the things that I did weren't as valuable. Yeah, now, I think that's, that's really important, especially in your ability to translate to us civilians mm -hmm. <laughs> with, the, with the work that you did. Um, because I think you're right, right? I mean, it's extremely. Uh, valuable work and very transferable too to the kinds of experiences you're going to be doing both in business school and afterwards too. Um, was there any, um, with that said, was there any imposter syndrome that you guys experienced in trying to figure out like is this the right course for me in terms of this transition, can I do it? Um, there's a lot of unknowns because maybe your experience was different than other applicants or other classmates. Um, any of that or you were like, nope, I've, I know this, I'm focused, I'm confident. <laughs> a little, a little bit. I had, there's a lot of uh, people who have like a little bit shorter of a gap between their undergrad and, mm -hmm. and going to the MQM in particular. I'm sure it's there's usually more experience between your undergrad and, and MB, the MBA yeah. program, but uh, for me, I hadn't been to back to like a structured school and taking statistics and <laughs> calculus and they were not doing calculus in the program thank goodness <laughs> but, um, but I hadn't taken like my math classes in so long <laughs> and so I was concerned um, just about how much I, I'd be able to catch up but they the program's great and been able to keep up so mm -hmm. <laughs> I was a little concerned about that though. <laughs> I think a lot of us felt that way yeah. going back to school. Any favorite classes that you guys are taking now that you want to share? I loved my accounting class. I, a lot of people dread that, but I thought it was awesome. Okay. But I, I think it was cool because one thing the professors do so well that I've seen is they relate it to what's going on in the world right now. Mm -hmm. So they'd bring in newspaper articles, we'd look at the Wall Street Journal and be like, oh yeah, this is what we just talked about in class yesterday. And, yeah. And it's so relevant to what's going on. Good. So I would say another accounting class, de <laughs> Detecting Earnings Management with Bill Mayhew. And the reason I love it is because 
you learn a lot of things and of course they'll be helpful for you if you're employed mm -hmm. by somebody but the technical earnings management is one of those things where you can see yourself using it for your own needs and purposes and I like to leave thinking hey I can use this mm -hmm. regardless of if I'm you know hired by somebody or not and what's the name of the course detecting earnings okay. management hmm. interesting okay how to read basically how to read uh, what is it about how to read oh so um, so when you're looking at earnings reports, so it's just read, yes. yeah, how to read it and making sure corporations aren't playing with the numbers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like 10K. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's fun. And then why did you choose the risk track, the risk management track? So in our, uh -huh. M, so, you know, our MQM program, you have four tracks that you can um, be involved in. You chose risk, so why risk? So I chose risk because I work in the risk industry and in the, in the risk technology industry. So GRC is like the term that they use in the, in the industry, but to put it simply, it's just enterprise risk management, and it's a technology that consolidates a company's overall risk posture, particularly banks and other regulatory um, mm -hmm. um, bodies. Like they, they're the ones who really need that um, in order to show regulators that they're on track and in compliance or and hedging their risk correctly. And um, so I chose the risk track because uh, it's where my past experience is, it's w where I'm at with my current company, mm -hmm. and it, I think will allow me to provide the most value to them and to our customers as well. Okay. Um, so that's why I chose that. Okay. Um, another question I have around, sometimes we get questions from uh, veteran applicants around uh, leadership involvement, right? So. You know, we have the essays with the 25 random facts, which you know I'm assuming were pretty easy for you guys to to talk about. Uh, but leadership and involvement, H how did you approach? That? I know that um, it's it's uh, a question I think that we have across the board. To some extent, some programs focus on it more than others. But how do you think about leadership and involvement be aside from your solely being in the military? Right? Were there were there other ways that you had been able to demonstrate leadership and involvement? military aside, right, because it's kind of a given, it's mm -hmm. kind of table stakes uh, when it comes to veterans, and sometimes our applicants are like, well, how else am I going to demonstrate this, right? I don't have time to do anything else, so what did you, how did you guys handle that? Well, and it doesn't have to be everyone. <clears throat> well, I'll say this, sometimes it feels like a disadvantage coming from the military and things like finance, this, that, and the other, but when it comes to leadership, it feels like it's unfair yeah. <laughs> <laughs> leaning towards us, and you said yeah. outside of the military, right? But the weird thing is just the simple nature of being in the military. There are certain things that you just do mm -hmm. in terms of just being a part of the community, even mm -hmm. if it's outside of like the military leadership aspect mm -hmm. yourself. Okay. So it's actually very hard to leave the military in any capacity without having done a lot of leadership. So yeah. I think one good thing about being a veteran is that's where the tables are kind of tilted in our favor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So you talked about in your experience, did you talk, just to help guide, did, did you talk about the roles that you had or did you talk about the uh, extracurricular or did you talk about the community aspects? Like oh, so when, you, when you did have to demonstrate <coughs> So give examples. So because I really wanted to get in, mm -hmm. talk about everything. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's great advice, right? Agreed. Fair game. That's so right. I mean, I, love I that. mean, you 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 take the low hanging fruit, yeah. you yeah. know, leadership officer, but then uh -huh. you go into love the that. community service events, and sometimes the community service events come from being in the military, mm -hmm. but you know, community service, and of course, all of the other things that. You know you do but again it's very hard to not be involved in leadership when you're in the military because the military especially when you're at your bases they like to do work within the community different schools and just from being in the military you end up doing three or four of the things that aren't even related mm. to the base yeah okay. you really do yeah. but i think if you lead projects or you're any part of a team there are ways that in your application you can show that you've had those leaders or you've demonstrated that leadership skill. Right. So if you've worked in any type of team or even if you're running your own project, mm -hmm. like there are ways that you, you have to brief that project to someone else. You have to tell them about it. Like there are characteristics of being a leader that you can exhibit and you can get that into your application and that can come across. Yeah. Right. I think that's an important word, the characteristics. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's like you don't, you don't necessarily have to have a role that's defined as a leadership role, mm -hmm. but like what characteristics of leadership have you shown in your experience in yeah, the past? Exactly. I think that's the important thing to get across. That's right, yeah. So I'm gonna ask a couple of specific questions. Um, okay. Rontavius, uh, you talked a little bit about your all the things you've done, but kind of um, 
uh, if you could go into a bit more detail, what what um, clubs, what activities you're involved in, and then talk about DAFA, the Duke Armed Forces Association, because I think they're critical, especially for our veterans who are interested in applying. They've been, you know, such a level, you know, wealth of support for our admissions. So starting with DAFA, I'd like to give a shout out to uh, Maggie and Brian. They're our president and co-president. Nice. And <clears throat> as far as DAFA, it's once again a community that's extremely helpful. The biggest thing, especially when coming into the MBA program, the daytime is trying to find a job afterwards. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And just the community we have set up as far as getting events out there specifically for veterans or supporting you or if you want to go investment banking. And the reason I'm saying investment banking is because I highly doubt that when you come from the military, you have <laughs> the skills to jump right into that. So they, mm -hmm. they help you along that process and also just having a good time together. So again, uh, DAPA has been extremely helpful. And again, a shout out to Maggie and Brian because they do a lot of work. I'm also a part of the ETA club. Mm. We just started that up this year. So we're really trying to get a lot more interest in entrepreneurship through acquisition. It's something that's been going on for a while, um, started in Stanford, of course, but we're moving it to over here at Fuqua. And just because we have programs that are just now starting, we have a lot of Fuqua alumni who have gone that path. It just hasn't been sh like classes strictly dedicated to that. So we're moving towards that. And then again, I'm also on the admissions team for BBSA. So. Um, Black Business Black student. Business Student Association. Yep. Which we appreciate. Is there anything you don't do? I know. Right? <laughs> yeah. So sleep. a little time. Yeah, right? When did, when so did you, you sleep? Right? <laughs> and, and you completed your summer internship at Goldman Sachs. Um, I did. How was the experience? What did you learn? And um, anything else you want to share about the resources maybe that you took advantage of to obtain that internship that would be helpful from a career mm -hmm. support perspective? Mm -hmm. So I learned a few things. First, we want to go with New York is an amazing, fun city to live in, <laughs> <coughs> but terribly expensive. <laughs> but also, uh, being at Goldman, I one thing about Goldman, flat organization, so you can get in touch with anybody you want, no matter mm -hmm. how high they're up. Mm -hmm. And just being able to speak to everybody and learn about their career paths and the opportunities there, I mean, I learned so much. I really can't describe everything, not just within finance, but um, networking career opportunities but in terms of the question you asked about being here mm -hmm. and the resources I mean where do I start firstly I mean they come to campus <laughs> which, which helps which helps but then you have again there was another veteran the previous year who was working at Goldman mm -hmm. so he helped me out with my interviews helped me out with networking and talking to people there's the uh, career center so I can go on and on about all the resources, but if you pinpoint what you want to do, mm -hmm. the resources are around you to, to help you get there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, for those who are interested in our Daytime MBA, um, quickly, what's a typical day like for you? Mm. No sleep. So <laughs> I wake up at 5 to try to go to the gym. Wilson opens at 5.30. Okay. So, it doesn't always happen that way. <laughs> but if I'm lucky enough, go to the gym. Right now, I because I can choose my own classes, I do not have an 8.30 class. Ooh. So that's perfect. <laughs> so, but in that time, I'm doing something for one of the mini clubs that I'm a part of or trying to get everything ready for my entrepreneurship through acquisition journey. Mm -hmm. And then I take classes from... 10.30 until 6.30, because I have oh, three wow. classes back to back to back. Okay. And on Tuesday and Wednesday, I don't have classes, but <laughs> but <laughs> I'm busy working. Yeah. Yes. But that's that's the typical day for, and did you ask for first year or second year? No, se second, year. second year. I mean, okay. you know, whatever your typical yeah. day is now. Um, uh, first year is, is different, I guess. Anything different from a first year perspective? Um, if we're being honest, mm -hmm. There's not much different from first year and second year. I'm just as busy. The only difference is because I've been here for a while, I'm used to handling the stress and the time management. But honestly, I'm just as busy. It just, it just gets easier. Gotcha. But you're always working. Yeah, yeah. All right, Chris, your turn. <laughs> um, you know, talk a little bit about your role, um, mm -hmm. your, your, your professional role, and then how, do you, how are you structured to manage all the different responsibilities that you have in your life and 
what's the unique, um, what do you feel is most unique about the executive MBA mm -hmm. program that has been beneficial in your professional work? Yeah, so um, I'm a construction project manager, so I build mm -hmm. healthcare facilities. I'm currently working on a $60 million project, and I'm one of two project managers on that. So cool. we're very busy. Um, we have a great team, though, and I rely on them a lot to help us get, us get us through the day. So there's always fires. There's always things you got to put out. Um, you've got to manage that, you know, whether you're working 40 hours or 80 hours a week, you got to balance that with school. Like, mm -hmm. you will figure it out. Um, luckily, everyone knows I'm going to school right now, so they understand I'm going to miss a Friday here and there because you have to come up for the weekend for your three-day residency mm -hmm. um, and come up and manage that time with your team. So. As I said earlier, we sometimes we meet at nine o'clock at night to get through our assignments because everyone's got a full-time schedule. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so bal that balancing act has been a challenge, but after this first term, we're getting ready to start our second term, we've kind of figured out okay. what works and what doesn't yeah. for us. I found out the weekends, I just don't have weekends anymore. That's when I do all my schoolwork because um, that's how I'm able to manage. Um, and then managing family as well, you know, supporting my spouse who is also, act, he's still active duty, actually, okay. active duty army. Um, and he continuously is doing different things and gone and, and taking care of the house while he's gone. And mm -hmm. um, it's also a challenge, but very supportive. We talked about me going back to school in advance and said, hey, this is, this is the time, this is the best time to do it. Um, and I've been able to use already what I've learned at Fuqua directly in school. Um, we had a class this last term on organizational structure and leadership and we got through the class and some of that I was like I went back to my job and I was like man this is really relevant to what's going on at work right now and how we're structured in our particular team. So it's pretty amazing and and it validates I guess that this is the right time in my career to make this change right? Um, or to add this to my you know um, repertoire is that I have this experience now and it's very relevant and I can use it right away and I can see the benefit of it right away. And you've gotten the promotion, is that correct? Uh, no, still I'm, still, I'm still um, a project manager and but uh, there's less of us on this job than on my last one so I feel like there's more going on. <laughs> <laughs> you just have more responsibility. It just feels like more responsibility. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> and so I know you're an admissions um, ambassador mm -hmm. for us so thank you very much. Yeah. Are there other um, co-curricular activities that you've engaged in or interest groups or things like that uh, we, outside of the class? We've just started a women in, women in oh, business club. Great. And so I'll probably get involved with that a little bit. I think I missed the event last, or actually it might be tonight. I might be able to go to the event tonight. <laughs> um, or I might have missed the first one. I can't remember. But that's the other juggling piece is yeah. how much do you get involved in. Luckily there have been three women in our cohort that have really taken that on head on and I think it's going to be a huge added benefit for us. Yeah. Well, wonderful. So. Thank you. All righty. Brendan, bring it up to the rear. So right. talk to us a little bit. You talked to us about why you decided to um, embark on the risk track. Mm -hmm. uh, what other activities are you involved in? You know, mm -hmm. you're, you're a little unique in that you have some responses, some professional responsibilities that not me. Not, not everyone in the no, program. No. <laughs> right. It's not a, not a not a thing that everyone does in the MQM, but talk a little bit about how your day is. Talk, mm -hmm. Give them a sense of your day. So my day starts with getting up in the morning and first of all, walking my 10-month-old Dalmatian, who's <laughs> a ball of energy. Um, after that, depending on the day, sadly, I don't get to choose my, my schedule, so it depends term by term. And luckily, I've, I've talked to my work a lot and they know I'm in school, so I work when I can. And um, and then I do all my I do I go to classes, and I do all my assignments outside of those those class hours. And when I really am working all day, I'm either doing work or school or class. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's my schedule is is more intense than I think most people in my the programs are. But I'm kind of used to mm -hmm. it's like tough schedules from the background, but. Um, I, I enjoy it. Um, really, the nice thing I like that we have Wednesdays off. That's a huge plus because it gives us a chance to catch up on work and homework. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I, I don't have a typical MQM program, so I don't want to give people false expectations. <laughs> 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 right. And um, what are you interested in doing with your degree? Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know fully what I want to do 
long term, long term, but I have already started a position as a business analyst for the company I was working for previously. Okay. Um, and I'm currently optimizing our technology stack uh, on the revenue side of the business. And I want to further invest time in, um, in the, in the uh, technical aspect of the business and working to get to a place where I'm able to build it, communicate that up to leadership, mm -hmm. um, and then eventually step more into a leadership role. Uh, but I want the technical experience to understand everything that is needed to get the business functioning and drive revenue. So mm -hmm. um, it's a, not a very specific answer, but um, yeah, right now a business analy analyst is a good fit for what I'm looking for and yeah. eventually I'll scale from there. Okay, great. Any um, last words of wisdom for anyone interested in uh, mm -hmm. any of the one year specialized master's programs? Yeah, um, I think an important thing uh, to think about if you're l just looking at coming to a grad program in general is, mm -hmm. is like, why are you going here? Um, like, what is your strategy and when you're out, like what kind of value are you hoping to take away from the program yeah. to put into business or into whatever it is um, that you would like to do? Um, so having an idea just before you go into it of like what value do you want from it mm -hmm. so that you can go into it with a, a good mindset. And um, I've noticed that there's some, I enjoy all my classes, but certain ones I'm like, hey, like this is like, this one is like really for me. I should double down on this and try and get as much from the, that as I want, as I can, because this uh, is going to help add value from me to the, uh, my business. Mm -hmm. so, Which class is that? Um, for me right now, it's, I'd say it's more so uh, enterprise risk management, and then uh, data science I've really enjoyed too. Mm -hmm. They're all, they're all great. Like I, I love them all, but um, uh, just like having having a plan of how you're going to take this degree and. Right and how it's going to be valuable to you because, okay. um, I, yeah, I think just having a clear path is important. That's right. That's so. right. Any other final words of advice for our audience? Don't be afraid. Like, mm -hmm. um, I think you talked about imposter syndrome earlier. Mm -hmm. um, you have the skill set whether you realize it or not, and I, you just you don't know until you try. And I think a lot of people get, and veterans included, like we feel like we can't make that transition or that change into something different um, or we're not ready to and, and your experience is valuable mm -hmm. and that there is a way to relate it to what's going on outside of your military career. That's right. Mm -hmm. Great advice, yeah. Chris. But you? Um, <clears throat> my advice would be because they took <laughs> both the great ones, but uh, <laughs> you went last. enjoy the journey. <laughs> oh, I mean, like, okay. Honestly, okay. enjoy the journey, the application process when you look back. Those 25 facts about yourself are pretty fun. And then that first year, when you're struggling through classes, you look back and hopefully you'll enjoy it. So just enjoy it. Yeah, it process. goes fast. It right. goes so it fast. It goes really fast. So Well, great. Well, thank you so much <laughs> thank you, for being so open and vulnerable and just great, you know, providing wonderful advice um, and sharing your stories, right? That's what this is about. I want to thank you. I want to thank our audience for um, tuning in for the first episode of the second season. I hope you really enjoyed our conversation, found it enlightening, and found how you could find belonging here, right? As you can see, there's so many different stories, so many different lived experiences, but we find one community here. So um, we hope you apply. We hope you um, stay tuned and join us for the next uh, series. Um, the next episode is going to be on November the 15th, and it's called Global Minds, American Dreams, international students excelling at Fuqua. And so I hope you can join us. Again, thank you all. I really appreciate it. And thank all of you out there. Enjoy. Be safe and be kind to each other. Bye-bye.